here at the Electrochemical Innovation Lab, we do fundamental fuel cell research from material level, doing catalysts and the membranes, but we're also expanding into UCL East to do something called the Advanced Propulsion Lab, where we'll be working with manufacturers such as Hyundai to develop uh, the next generation of fuel cell technologies. In simplistic terms, I have a fuel cell here. It's a chemical reaction where it takes hydrogen gas, which is the most abundant element in the universe, um, and it combines this with oxygen from the air that we breathe in something like this, this is a fuel cell. Uh, so hydrogen comes to one side, oxygen on the other, these form together to, to create water, H2O, and releases electricity in the process and some heat. So the only thing that comes out the back of a fuel cell car whilst it's being used is water vapour and a little bit of heat. We've worked alongside Hyundai to work out a drive route that looks at the most polluted roads in London um, and also to explain fuel cell technology. We looked at something called the London Air Quality Networks database, um, which is available online that shows all the hotspots for pollution in, in London. Um, there's EU guidelines and the UK guidelines are in line with the EU guidelines for not exceeding certain pollutant uh, limits. So there's stuff called PM 2.5 and PM 10, which means particulate matter that measures 2.5 microns or 10 microns. These are really fine dusts and these um, are negative to our health if we breathe them in. So the limits um, are regularly exceeded in some areas of London, such as Marylebone Road and Marble Arch. So we looked at these pollution hotspots and we developed a route for the Nexo to drive which could contribute towards the filtering of these um, hotspot areas. The correlation seems quite simple. Wherever there's a lot of congestion and a lot of idling traffic, so if you have buses, trucks and cars stuck at traffic lights in really congested areas, the engines are still running, they're producing these pollutants on site and with the big high-sided buildings they're keeping this, these particulates in, in place. One of the benefits of fuel cell cars over another green technology such as battery electric cars is that they have to consume a, a, an air feed, they need air to to combine with the hydrogen. So when you're drawing this in, a fuel cell needs very high pure purity levels. So you need really high purity hydrogen, which is already sorted out from where you get it from. But the air that you take in has to be purified. So the filtration system in the Hyundai Nexo takes a, an airstream, and if you're in one of these areas, such as Marble Arch or Marylebone Road on the, on the route that we planned, you're taking in these high levels of pollution, these dusts and they're getting separated through the filtration process before they get to the fuel cell. And then the only thing coming out of the fuel cell is water and heat. So the, the dust is getting trapped in the, in the filtration system. As a rough generalization, a standard automotive panel filter that's in every car can filter down to about PM5, so five microns. Um, so the, the filtration system in the Nexo can go down to 2.5 and can remove 99.9% .9 of these particulates. So it's already twice as good as a, a standard automotive system. Um, but alongside the gas diffusion layer in the fuel cell and the humidification system, any dust that does get through is, is ultimately met at some point before it, it, it exits the car. One of the main pitfalls currently with fuel cell technology as a whole is where we get the hydrogen from. So at the point of use, hydrogen fuel cells are a very, very clean zero emission technology. But currently, the vast majority of the hydrogen that we use is made from steam reformation of natural gas, which is a process of using methane and stripping the hydrogen out, but there's also some carbon emissions associated with this. So currently, the hydrogen is not as green as it could be, but if the technology keeps maturing and keeps commercializing in, in the trajectory that it's taking at the moment, there are clean methods we could use, such as electrolysis, which is the complete opposite of a fuel cell. So a fuel cell combines hydrogen and oxygen to make water, electrolysis is splitting water for the hydrogen and oxygen. And if you use renewable energy sources such as solar panels or wind turbines, this whole process is, is a lot more green.